We are back in Manhattan. Today is SantaCon. Lots of very festively dressed folks out for SantaCon. Let's see what happens. Once again at the Think Geek store. Gonna see if I can check out the rest of the store and hopefully it's not too crowded. Let's see. We are now on 18th Street. And I did two books at once. I did one that was about Lego and then did another that was about Frozen. 
And let me tell you, when Disney calls you up and they say, you want to do Frozen? I didn't even let them finish the first syllable. It was like, you want to do Fro? And I was like, yes, yes, I'll totally do it. Could have been fro yo for all I could have done. It. Anyways, um, so everybody here, what, what I don't think everyone um, got, to under, uh, got to tell is it's a very complex job that we all do. Um, there's a lot of mistakes that go into it. We work very hard cutting and folding paper and figuring out how all these things go together. I don't know as much about origami, but I know it's the same thing. You know, you're figuring out. So there's, there's a lot of problem solving with what we do. And everyone here, they, we all have the, that brain in our head. And I don't know how it works, but it just it does, you know? Um, so we start off and we're cutting and folding paper to figure out how these topics go together. And they don't always come out right the first time. Um, and I make a lot of mistakes, and I'm sure you guys do too. I, I'm throwing away paper and rebuilding things over and over again. Um, but it's a cool job. And um, after, for me, I do a lot of parts of the job. I, I do the engineering, I do the writing, and I also do the artwork. Right now I'm working on a book um, uh, for Pixar for next year, and I'm freaking out about the artwork because there's so many. There's 19 different Pixar movies. And I have to make art for each one of those scenes, and I'm just I'm freaking out. But because um, it needs to be done like yesterday, you know. So whatever, that's what I do. This is my life, and, but it's a great life. Um, so uh, <clears throat> these two books, uh, Lego. So I was a, a, a Lego kid growing up, building stuff. Of course, my Legos aren't like the Legos you guys have now. Like you guys have really cool Legos. Mine were just like green, red, blue. And every time you wanted to make something, it looked like, you know, it didn't look like anything. Because we didn't have a cool, like, all gray, so you can make a spaceship or anything. But this book was fun because not only did I get to, you know, like, make all these cool pop-ups. Like, this one is probably the tallest one I've ever done. Um, it's a giant tower of Legos. I thought, for this page, it, I thought, wouldn't it be cool if all, if all your friends dumped out their Lego sets? and you all built something like super tall. So that's kind of the inspiration. Actually, we did this in our work studio, um, or my work studio. I mean, I, I have an assistant or two that helped me, but we built a giant eight foot tall tower of Lego. And it was, a, you don't want to step on Legos to repair people. <laughs> but, um, so we built this kind of stuff. So um, in preparation for this book, I actually got sent like, a hundred different Lego sets from Lego and built them to get like into it. But see, it wasted a lot of time. Um, and then I had to do the artwork and everything like that. But um, but it was a lot of fun. Like in this book, also, I'm, I'm known for doing these transforming pop-ups. So you know, with Lego, it's really cool because you can make one thing out of a set and then change your mind and make something else. So uh, the car on the first page actually transforms uh, into a plane. Now sometimes when you make pop-up books, now these are all handmade books. There's somebody that's cutting and folding all these different pieces and putting it together before it comes out to bookstores. So sometimes things are a little tight and sometimes they don't ex work exactly the way you want to. But anyways, there's a plan and then you pull a tab on the bottom. I'm loud, you can hear me, right? And then there's a little dinosaur. So there's all kinds of stuff like that within the book and this, so that's what the, was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm gonna put this down. And, um, and then working on Frozen uh, was also fun. You don't know how many times like I woke up in the middle of the night and the song was going through my head. <laughs> it was unreal. But it was really cool to be able to recreate all these scenes. I mean, there's even like interior shots. Um, and to be able to, you know, to work with Disney directly. I work with the, the movie production team to make all these different pops inside there. And there's a lot more funny, like sort of transforming scenes. large-scale, three-dimensional pops inside that change as well as the story progresses. I like to make these pop-ups that transform because sometimes it advances the story. You can get, and it, and it gives me an extra page. That's kind of usually what, the, when I do something like this, you know, it's kind of like cheating. You know, my publisher says, that's enough. Don't make any more. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to make one pop that turns into another scene. And so that way I can sneak and get something else in there. Well, it's a great way of advancing the story and also, uh, you know, cheating uh, as well. So it was a really fun book to work on, and um, uh, you know, I live here in New York City. I have a studio down uh, in the West Village, 
and uh, I have a couple of uh, I have a couple of assistants here and there. Nobody, I I don't work with anybody full time because I, I I am one of those selfish artists who really likes his private time. So um, usually by the third day when someone's in my office working with me, I'm like, get out of here! Like, you're driving me nuts. Um, but I do work with assistants occasionally, and um, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a cool job. It's intense. And I'm, this is actually going to be my last event, probably until next year, because uh, I'm so busy usually. But um, it's great to be here, and I thank you guys for Oh, and for anybody, I have a little craft to give out, if anyone wants one later. Um, so I pre-cut a, a, a pop-up craft for you. So what you'll do, it, you know, sort of, it's going to become a little you know, snowman. So what you'll do is there's little score marks, it's super easy, you'll see this. fold it along those score marks, like that, and in the middle, like that. Now once you do all of those folds like that, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to put glue, well, you can use glue or double stick tape, and you're going to put it in the ends here, like this. I've been doing a lot of these crafts, um, video, online on on YouTube um, and I like them so I'm gonna try to keep doing it weekly we'll have different pop-up and paper crafts that we do. okay so here we have our card right now we need to just pull out these little pop-up areas One. Anyone who wants one, come by, say hi, and we'll give you one. All right? So, and then you can color it, and you can do all kinds of decorating. You can put the glitter all over it if you want to, because I know that parents love glitter. <laughs> <laughs> and you can give it to someone for holidays. So, uh, thank you very much. Now at Union Square, checking out their little flea market and food market. Just taking a look at those puppies. Yeah. I want one so, so bad. Someday. Someday.
much as I wanted to show you guys that little uh, flea market. It was way too crowded, but it kind of just goes on and on and on. Actually, let's see how crowded it is further in. First, let's look at the doggies. Uh, still a little too crowded for me. So, on to the next uh, location. I have no idea where that's going to be. Today's more of a let's get lost in Manhattan day. So, everything's just as so surprising to you guys as it is to me. Square Barnes and Nobles. I have never seen the city quite so mobbed before. The tree is lit. I'm not gonna go any further because it's probably really mobbed there. I was just at Kinokuniya. I've never seen that store quite so mobbed. So doubt there's anything new here, but let's take a look.
So I hope you all enjoyed another little outing into the city. I decided to go south instead of north like I usually do. And I stumbled into some interesting things, including that author's panel on pop-up books, creative and interactive books. And as you could see, there were many incredible authors and illustrators there, including Matthew Reinhardt. And I just actually happened to have a sample of his Frozen pop-up adventure book. This was given out at New York Comic Con 2016. And as you can kind of see up in the corner, it says Cover Not Final. Earlier in the video, you might have seen that the image on the front is now just Elsa's hand and some swirly, glittery, sparkly snow streams or wind. Not really sure if you look really close. The cover now is mostly just her hand and the swirls, but the sampler itself still has a really nice cover. So it says Disney Frozen, a pop-up adventure by New York's time best-selling author, Matthew Reinhardt. And this is the back, Disney Frozen, a pop-up adventure, Matthew Reinhardt. And it's just got a bunch of information about marketing the pop-up book. The book itself cost $40 US, so do be aware of the price tag. And this was released by Disney Enterprises, or Disney Books, Disney Editions. And this is Matthew Reinhardt's illustration of Elsa. This is a larger image of Elsa from the cover. And you can kind of see Olaf in the middle there. And again, this is only a sampler, so I only got one page of the many from the pop-up book. So you open it up. This is the first page that he showed off when he opened the book and it is pretty large. Let's see if we can get it to stay open a little bit. So we'll take a look at Elsa's ice castle from the very top to the bottom. And again, this is an unfinished version. The real version is super, super shiny and sparkly. This is just a flat matte version. This is also the image on the cover of the book. And it does have the passage from the pages. And a little bit on Oaken's trading post. And when you pull the tab, it folds up. And you get an angry Oaken. So that's pretty neat. Let's take a closer look at the image. And also like Mr. Reinhardt said, when you flip the book around, there is an internal scene. So there is a design on both sides. It's not going to be completely blank or white on the inside. I don't know what the finished version might have, but the unfinished version has a snowflake on the inside. I don't know if it's more sparkly on the inside or if it has any of Elsa's furnishings, maybe the chandelier have to take a look at the finished version but it is really awesome and super detailed how he was able to finish both sides and I love the snowflake pattern on the bottom there so this is Matthew Reinhardt's frozen pop-up book or just a sample page of the book now available in stores i hope you guys all enjoyed this video and if you did make sure to hit that thumbs up if you haven't already please do subscribe and for further content you can follow me on tumblr instagram and twitter and until next time everybody